Hi folks, Dr. Brad Semp here, AKA The Busyness Doctor and host of The Busyness TV Show on busyness.com. This is the show dedicated to helping you to unbusy yourself. Today's episode is brought to us by ListPing. ListPing is an email management and autoresponder service dedicated to helping you to grow large and responsive email lists. Create your account right now for the first month for only $1 by visiting listping.com. In today's episode, I'm going to cover cloud living, and then I interview motivational expert Josh Hines, and I wrap up with an episode called Kuroshi. Now time for our Buck the System segment. This is a segment in which we take a look at real life examples of people or situations where people buck the system. They don't follow the crowd, they take actions that are non-normal to produce extraordinary results. And one of those areas that I see that's up and coming really, really fast is cloud living. This means essentially storing your life, having the intestinal fortitude and to feel it comfortable and then to take the actions to move all of your documentation, your paperwork, your life information to the cloud. Quote, the cloud. Now what is the cloud, right? It's a, a cluster of servers that, that are spread all over the world that store your information, you know, different bits and pieces across different servers, across different countries. But that you're able to go and retrieve that information on a moment's notice. Now there's three reasons why I am a proponent of cloud living. And you can think of this as an acronym, ACO. The first one is accessibility. Now, when you put things into the cloud, you can access them from anywhere around the globe as long as you have internet access. No more leaving a document, a passport, a scanned copy of a birth certificate or something at home when you're out traveling. You can access it. It's accessible, right? Uh, in the cloud. Now, the C is for uh, centralization. Centralization is everything that you put up in the cloud is centralized under one spot. There is no more having maybe some documents in a bank uh, security vault, some documents in your home vault or safe, some documents in your filing cabinet, some at work, things all over the place. All of your information is centralized into one area. And then the last one, the ACO, accessibility, centralization, and organization. Some of the mechanisms, the websites, applications that are available out there, and I'll give you two uh, that I highly recommend and use. Is, number one is Google Docs. We store just about everything from videos to work files to personal files on Google Docs. The second one is Evernote. Evernote is what we use to essentially live paperless and upload thoughts, ideas, all of our bills, documents, and so forth. And everything is organized and searchable so that I can retrieve it very, very easily rather than trying to look through a file cabinet or wondering uh, where did I keep something or put something in email. So accessibility, centralization, and organization. Those are the three reasons that I would recommend that you take a look at living in the cloud or what I call cloud living. So, do you live in the cloud? Scroll down below and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear your take and your, maybe your fears, frustrations, or testimonials. You know, how is it working for you and your cloud living? It's now time for our I Hate Gurus segment. This is a segment in which I interview not gurus, but experts. And today I have a very special guest, a good friend of mine, a motivational expert and an expert speaker by the name of Josh Hines. So pay attention to this I Hate Guru segment and just listen for some nice tips and tricks on getting and staying motivated. So Josh, welcome to the Busyness TV show. Uh, thanks for having me. Absolutely, hey, I'm, I'm glad that you're here. Now I always start off each one of my guests with this question and that is, you're not really a guru, are you? No, no, I, I definitely don't think so. Um, I don't know. Do I look kind of, kind of like yo green? Got my green ears on and all. <laughs> uh, nope, you're coming through without without all that green stuff here. So, so I think we're good. Now, it's not that I hate gurus. I just love the show, the the segment title, because I don't like the name guru. So we bring on uh, experts like yourself, and 
And today I'm excited to, to talk about, you know, amongst other things, motivation. And I, I know that for me, uh, I was just telling somebody the other day about the story of uh, our garage. You know, we moved from Michigan down to Florida. And, uh, and then we moved, you know, we were at one home, moved to another home. And the garage has kind of gotten out of whack with our, with our five kids and all, their, all of our stuff. And it wasn't on the agenda a couple Sundays ago. We came home from church. And whatever it was, and I, and I seem to do this in my life, it just tripped. And I was super motivated and spent the rest of the day getting that garage up to snuff. And it's like, I'm looking around, I'm like, man, how come I can't stay super motivated like this all the time? So I'm extremely excited to have you on today and talk to you, talk to you a little bit. Yeah, I'll be fine. So here, here's the first question. So, you know, I know that you love to speak. I've heard you multiple times and, and you know, that you love to share your message with audiences around the world. And I, I personally know that you're an excellent speaker uh, because I've watched you. But for those of you who maybe haven't seen you speak before, what is your key message that you share with folks and, you know, how, how do you help them in their life and business? Sure. So I would say there's really two parts in kind of the work that I do. The first, first would be, you know, the speaking and the other part would be the coaching. And while I, I work, you know, in both areas together, um, typically my presentation, of course, includes some how-to where we give specific, um, touching on, you know, sales from, from a, really from a relationship marketing point of view, um, networking as some people call it. Yeah. Um, also big time encouragement, just letting people, sometimes people just need to know that, you know, they can do it. Um, and that they don't have to have everything specifically planned out. If they'll do some things, they can, they can get to where they want to get. That's what I love about the work that you do, Brad, is you, you help people. So, you know, here's something interesting, and I don't mean to get off the topic so much, but it's yeah. when, you, when you talk, in the work that I do, say when I'm, when I'm helping people with the goals or, or just kind of becoming more action-oriented, so many people have a goal, but, it, but it's like they operate at this 10,000 view level, like they're in this big airplane and they're kind of flying over. Mm -hmm. And they and you know you ask them well what's your goal well well and they can never really and I know you see this a lot in the work you do they they can't explain how they want to get there, but they know they want to be a millionaire or they know they want to have a business yeah. but they don't really know what you know what I mean there's this yeah. big gap yeah. and a lot of times it's 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 doing important skills and and teaching working with people to develop those important skills very much like what you do, and once you get those those that gap you know filled in. Once you bridge that gap, and it's not, it's never as difficult as most people think it is, then you can see some, then they can see some big changes. So from the presentation point, a lot of it is, is encouragement, a how-to in it as well. Um, a lot of it's sharing a part of my story and letting people relay, you know, let, because even though our stories are different, most people can identify with challenges and, and apply them in their own life. And then yeah, the other so part is, is, you know, the coaching, just working with people and, and um, basically let them take their big ideas and create an actions around that to get it done, you know. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so we're talking with Josh Hines here of joshhines.com, also of getmotivation.com. And, uh, you know, one of the five biggest causes of, of busyness, Josh, that we talk about and I teach is mindset. And as, as a little story I gave earlier, you know, we work with uh, folks to, to try to get people into the frame of mind to make sure that when they understand what their intentions are, they, they maybe even take that next step to design their action, right? So they're being proactive about their action. They know where they're at now and where they want to go, and they design the path to get there, but then they just lose that motivation to, to, you know, to do that. So do you agree that you know, motivation rests squarely underneath that, that, that mindset category of mine? Yeah, I, I would say it's, it's just like you said, it's, it's absolutely mindset. Um, I remember the little story you were talking about before when you, you were just – what, what's interesting about about motivation and and motivation and you know getting things done whatever term you want to put to it, what's interesting is or, or getting to accomplishment as I'd call it. It's interesting because it's very much like a a snowball effect. You know, in your story, you said you you put the thing off, but once you got into it, from the, it just started snowballing, and then of course you're thinking, why don't I do? Why is it hard to get into this? Well, the reason that it's hard to get in this, and this is coming from somebody who teaches this stuff, yeah. as you do. The reason is because we're human. Yeah. If we if we if we were robots, you know, or whatever, or we had something that could, we're human because there's things that happen in our lives that get our attention, and and you know it gets it's kind of simple. Whatever you know, whatever whatever we gets our attention gets done most of the time, more often than not, and so of course, 
more so than just motivation, I think the real, what most people really want would be sustained motivation. Mm -hmm, and I think right. that the way you get sustained motivation is, and this is going to sound kind of funny because most people are like, what's the difference? You know, is, is going from motivation to more of a personal, helping somebody to tap into more inspiration. You, most people say, well, what's the difference? Well, okay, for example, I can lean in here right here and I can start talking fast and I can start talking about specific things and get you fired up. I can adjust your physical state. I can get you interested. Mm -hmm. I, it's a trained skill. But the yep. problem is, as soon as I back off, you back off. Yep. See, and that's the same thing that happens in presentation. So when you go see a good speaker, it's not that what they taught you wasn't good and valuable. It's that you didn't have sustained motivation. If you get inspired and you find your inner, what, what, that's what's going to keep you plugged in to, and, and, you know, again, using the things like you talk about, Brad, the skills that you teach, yep. those are what keep you sustained on what it is that you want to do. And as long as you remain sustained, then you get a little accomplishment, another accomplishment, another accomplishment keeps you pulled into the process. Yeah, I, I love that. We're gonna we're gonna dive into that much deeper in, in our unbusy secrets uh, segment when when I peel back the onion with you a little bit more in that next interview. Uh, let me let me move on here, just in the interest of time. You know, so you have an audio training CD that's entitled "Why Perfect Timing Is a Myth." And so when it comes to you know personal action management, uh, you know that, that we teach, it, I have this concept is called 10% perfect. So yeah, I'm curious to hear just a, a brief overview of, of what your CD is about. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the CD is actually a bunch of different vignettes, a bunch of different little life lessons. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the reason it's called Why Perfect Time is Myth is because one of the lessons is on that, okay. that there is no perfect time. You want to start a business, you got to have the basics. And if it would fit, I've never... You know what you said, ten percent perfect. When you told, when I first heard you say that, it was like, man, I should, I should. I wish I had thought of that. <laughs> because, but that's exactly what it is. There really is no perfect time. Yeah. Yes, there are things that that if you already have the skills or if you already know what to do, you may be a little bit better off. Perfect example, just to use that term. When I started my site, I had when I started what is now my business, had no idea. I had a, or I had no idea what it would become. I had a basic idea of it. I was interested in personal development. Started a website. Years later, I learned, mm -hmm. and there was no perfect time. Could I have known more? Would I have been better off if I'd known more? Probably, but I can tell you, if I'd waited to know more, me and you wouldn't have, the, the, you know, be talking right now. Yeah, um, right. a lot. I wouldn't have the same life that I have, and so that's really the basic of that lesson. Awesome. No, that's great. So we're running out of time on this particular uh, segment here, but. The, the final question I usually end with is, you know, I teach a concept called action units, which is a short 15 minute, very focused, uninterrupted period of time where you're, you know, you're just totally into a particular action and producing a particular result. So, you know, when it comes to what you teach, is there, what would you recommend to, you know, to, to business owners, something that maybe they can do in one action unit, 15 minutes each and every day, very focused uh, period that's going to move them forward in one area or another in their, in their business? Actually, you know what, I'll tell you, i got to give you some credit because I'm so glad I've been waiting to answer that question because since you've started this show, that's one of the segments that I watch and I love what people say. And, um, and I've, thought, I've thought about this. This is not like an on-the-fly question. Since I first heard you ask that, I've been thinking about this. Right. And basically what I would say is, is, and there's a lot of different things, but I would say this, for this one, without a doubt, I would say, you know, I go online, I have a little online timer, you can Google it or whatever, whatever you want to do, egg timer, however you want to do it, and I set it to that 15 minute time, and then what I do is I go into my contact database, and I spend time reaching out to contacts, whether it's colleagues, hmm. whether it's go, I'll, I'll spend time going back through people that have bought that CD that we just talked about, and right. I will just, now I'm not selling them, most people will tell you to sell them, blah, 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 I'm not, what I'm doing is, it's a very simple message. It's been a while since I've talked to you, Brad. How's it? I just wanted to see how everything was going your way. Is there anything I can help you with now in the future? You know, keep me in mind. Love it. And you know what I'm saying? And, and, I, and, and, it's not, and it's not even, and I write it out. Even though I could kind of be slick and type it out, I write it out just because I want to remind myself that it's personal. Yeah. And the point is not to get through a thousand of them, but to really be with that person in your, in your, that you're putting out when you're, as far as you can be in the email. And then you just reply back. And, I'm, and sometimes I get two people, sometimes I get three people, sometimes I get ten people as quick as I can contact. 
but it's not, you know what I mean? That's what I would say. Awesome. Hey, Josh, great, absolutely great one there. And so I'm excited here to, uh, to talk with you more on the Unbusy Secrets portion. So, you know, folks can, can join us there in, in that program where we're gonna, I'm going to speak with you for, you know, another 25 or 30 minutes. We're going to talk more details about sustained motivation, uh, that you know, developing re personal relationships with folks, and, and more about, uh, you know, other uh, secrets, that, uh, tricks of the trade that I can pull out of you. So, um, but I, I really want to appreciate or say thank you, and I appreciate you coming on the Business TV show with me today. Where can folks find out more information about you, Josh? Sure. Um, there's, I'd say, two places right off the bat. One would be GetMotivation.com, where we get just a whole bunch of you know, personal development motivational material. And then for my speaking and coaching and contact me personally would be J-O-S-H-H-I-N-D-S.com, JoshHines.com. JoshHines.com. And awesome. So folks watching this, you can look down below in the bar below. We'll have both of uh, Josh's contact URLs there, GetMotivation.com as well as JoshHines.com. So uh, Josh, thanks, buddy, for being on, and I uh, look forward to carrying forward here with Unbusy Secrets with you in just a moment. So thanks for being on. Oh, thank you. All right. Bye-bye. So welcome back. I hope that you enjoyed that short interview with my good friend and motivational expert, Josh Hines. I want to remind you that we carry on for another 40-plus minutes in an interview with Josh in our, for our Unbusy Secrets members. And you can join that particular program be an, become an Unbusy Secrets member for only $10 a month by visiting unbusysecrets.com. I'd like to invite you in to that behind the scenes portion of our Unbusy Society. So Josh, thank you for being with us. Awesome information. If you'd like to find out more about Josh Hines, simply visit www.getmotivation.com. Also, I'd love to hear your feedback or comments on that interview. Scroll down below. Leave me a comment, let me know your thoughts, and I will engage with you there. Are you working yourself to death? This is a question that we all must ask and answer honestly and objectively. This is something that the Japanese call kuroshi, or death by overwork, or in other words, occupational sudden death. Back in 1969, a 29-year-old Japanese male died in the workplace from a stroke. And the two leading causes of Kuroshi in Japan are heart attack and stroke, simply due to the stress of the job. And since that time, they've now tracked and reported statistics on Kuroshi. Here in the United States, we continue to work more and more hours. Whether you work for in corporate America or you're an entrepreneur or small business owner, the trend is to work more to have that badge of busyness tattooed or imprinted on your shoulder. No more, no longer. Here's three things that I'd like to lay out to you. Three levels of planning that can help you to avoid death by overwork. Number one, plan at the action unit level. Think in terms of action units, 15 minute, very focused, dedicated periods of time in which you work very, very intensely but then you're done and you take a break. It might be 15 minutes or you may string together multiple action units in a row before you take that break. Number two, plan at the daily level. Engage in what we call personal action planning. Follow our methodologies for how you design and plan each of your days. And number three, plan at the annual level. Look ahead to the next 12 months, whether you do it on a continually rolling basis or you plan in December for January through December of the next year. Plan on an annual basis. Look at where you're going to take vacations. How is your week going to be, be structured? Are you going to work four days, three days, two days, five days, seven days, but only a couple hours per day? Whatever that may be. So three things, plan at the action unit level, plan at the daily level, and plan at the annual level to help you to avoid death by overwork or Kuroshi. And ask yourself the question, are you killing yourself by the amount of time and stress from work. Now scroll down below and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear your input on the concept of Kuroshi and I'll engage with you there. So comment and I'll talk to you soon. So that wraps up episode 24 of the Busyness TV show. I'd like to thank you for being here. I want to just remind you to come like us over at Facebook at facebook.com forward slash busyness TV and also on Twitter. You can follow us there at twitter.com forward slash busyness TV. For any Mac lovers or iTunes users, go ahead and subscribe to our iTunes feed. You can watch our shows right there in iTunes. Very convenient, very slick. 
like to remind you to come back next week and each and every Thursday to catch new episodes of the Busyness TV show. Be sure also, if you're not a member uh, at busyness.com, to register for your free account where you can obtain a copy of our Busyness Survival Kit. I'm Dr. Brad Semp. I look forward to seeing you back here next Thursday for the next episode of the Busyness TV show. Take care and bye-bye.